Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look at this brand new model from Hobby King. This is the Micro Tundra. Now for those of you that watch the channel, you will know that I am a fan of the Tundra series of models. The original Tundra is still one of my favourites. In fact, the Tundras were part of my kit list or Kit Picks 2020 video that I did a little while ago. The Grand Tundra, its bigger brother, is just as nice and they fly so amazingly well. Now, from that introductory image, you'd think this was quite a big model. No, it's not. The clue's in the name, I guess, Micro Tundra. This is a very small version of the Tundra. Uh, it comes with both wheels, um, tier, uh, steerable tail wheel, and it also comes with floats as well in the box. Um, slightly different from what I was expecting. So let me talk about that in the video. I'll go through the unboxing, show you how it comes, talk about how to set it up and how to fly this thing, and give you some tips and tricks and some summary stuff at the end. The box it comes in is an awful lot bigger than you'd expect from a model that's only about 635 millimeters across and about 430 odd millimeters from the tip of the prop all the way back to the tip of the tail. And you'll see why as I take the top off. The majority of the model is already put together. So all you have to really do is install the wing at the top and put whatever landing gear you want. A couple of specs uh, in here is 1106 2350 kV brushless motor. Uh, it's a 6 amp brushless ESC, a little baby brushless ESC and it also has 2 gram servos, 6 of those because it does also have flaps as well. And then at the front it's a uh, 2 blade propeller 6 by 4 inches. Now it really is very well packed, it took me a long time to actually get the body out, but there it is, all kind of ready. Uh, so as you can see, there's a bit of room at the back for your receiver, and uh, all the decals and everything are applied, it's kind of ready to go. The thing at the front is actually removable, it's just held on with magnets, and I'd recommend moving the ESC back out of that front position, because that's where the battery needs to be. Have the little battery hatch uh, just pops on with magnets we have the optional floats that you can put on and there's also a rear steerable paddle for that as well and we have the bag of bits with the main gear in and they just push in held in with spring tension along with the prop and then back to the little knife uh, we have the main wind section. Again, everything's set up. All the servos on mine were nicely set up and 90 degreed, so there wasn't a lot of messing about. The only thing is, you'll notice on all of the servos, um, there uh, is these adjusters, so it's easy, but also it's not standard Molex connectors, so make sure you've got those uh, because you're going to have to convert these small little connectors on these smaller 2 gram servos so you can plug them into your receiver. In terms of building the thing, it's really straightforward. It's covered in the manual. The only thing you're going to have to do is just push in the floats or the wheels and also pop on the wing. It's held in with a single screw at the back. You can push in at the rear the tail wheel if that's you put the wheels on, or you can always put on... Now, in the back of bits, you've also got the spars. I'm not sure how needed they are, but they do make it look like a tundra, and those extra bits of wire are to hold on the float. So setup time is probably going to take you all of about 10 minutes and most of that is going to be binding your receiver and putting it in. You will need a five channel receiver and a number of these things just to convert it if you're going to use a standard receiver. I'm not aware or I didn't have any of the kind of micro receivers that have these kind of plugs in so I'm using a kind of regular receiver with standard DuPont connectors but you are going to need five channels including flaps. So let's talk a little bit about what this thing is actually like to fly. Now apologies for the state of the grass and the overcast conditions here. Uh, this is a model that really likes the absolute minimum 
of wind. Uh, so even the slightest breeze potentially will knock it around a little bit. And this was the best morning that I found, which one of those kind of uh, mornings after a rainstorm where there isn't a breath of wind. So as normal, I'm just going to check all of the throws. Uh, you don't need an awful lot of throw with this. I'd give yourself just about six to eight millimeters of throw on most of the controls and make sure you've got a chunk of expo on there as well. The center of gravity seems pretty spot on. Now I'm going to hand launch this because as you can see the grass is just way too long. It isn't going to uh, to run over the grass at all but it is really easy to hand launch too. So if you're in a position like this just give it a 100% throttle and throw it and away it goes. Now this video is actually from the maiden flight and I'm not having to even trim it. By default all of the servos were set exactly right so at 1500 middle channel positions they all lined up beautifully with control surfaces so props to hobby king for getting it that good straight out of the box in terms of the flying experience it is actually much better than i expected for such a small model it is as floaty as the bigger tundras and i'm getting about 10 minutes flight time out of that little 2s HV battery that's right in the nose to get the center of gravity spot on. I'm having to keep the throttle above 50% to keep a little bit of decent airflow over the wings because what I'm finding is that if you let the speed drop off too much then it will drop a wing and it will tip stall. It's not a horrific tip stall but if you're an experienced pilot, you can catch it quite quickly and correct for it. Uh, but you do have to watch for that. So although the flaps seem like a little bit of uh, an adornment, an ornament really, on such a small model, if you want to fly this thing slowly, it will help. If you drop the flaps, then it will go a little bit slower before tip stalling. So I would recommend if you're going to fly this thing, you're going to take off from the ground or when you're coming in for an approach uh, make sure that you have got those flaps wired up so you can drop them and it will absolutely help keep the, everything straight and level uh, and controllable right up to the point you touch down but this is actually really nice it isn't as stable as the bigger models um, it feels a little bit light and flighty and again I'm having to keep the throttle at about 50% if I try and float it around like you can do with the other tundras in the range this one won't let you do that so you constantly have to be just just on it just making sure it flies okay but if you've got a little bit of skill and you're not a beginner pilot this is actually an awful lot of fun and I do like the way the Tundra family looks and this is exactly the same. So there we have it, a Tundra for your backpack uh, or indoor flying really. I think this is a good model if there's almost no wind or it's a large indoor area but I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner. It doesn't fly in quite the same way as the bigger tundra and the grand tundra does it isn't as floaty but i'll get onto that in a minute lots of good things about it it is very quick and easy to set up uh, the build time in inverted commas is going to be about 10 minutes in total and that in probably includes brewing the cup of tea and uh, when it's all together it's reasonably sturdy they've used quite um, a solid foam in the construction a couple of things on here that I'm not a massive fan of. First of all is the fact that they have used that heavier foam. It does mean that for its size, I feel it's quite a heavy model. And that is one of the reasons why the flying characteristics are not the same as the Bigger Brothers. Plus, I think personally, rather than keep the same layout for the model, if they'd have just extended the core of the wing, maybe three quarters of an inch an inch, uh, it wouldn't have changed the looks that much, but it would reduce the wing loading a huge amount and give it a much uh, more floaty flight characteristic that would have been gentler for beginner pilots. But if you have any kind of skill, if you're intermediate or above, then this can be a lot of fun to fly. A couple of other tips I'll give you on a building. Um, I would remove this piece here. Uh, you can take the majority of it out. Um, it, it'll help with battery placement and be able to get to all the electronics and things like that as well. Um, and I potentially would put a little dab of glue on this hatch for where the motor comes in. Uh, this is held on with a magnet and 
I'm not a fan of having something loose behind the prop that can actually hit it in flight. While we're talking about dabs of glue, I could be tempted to also glue the main wing in as well. It's held in place with one little screw. Camera's kind of picking that up. Uh, that's screwing into plastic. Um, it's not going to take too many goes before that will start to strip, and it's a very small screw. Personally, I think it should have been something like an M3 screw into a captive nut. That would have uh, give it an awful lot more solid feeling. I don't want to trust my whole model to that one little screw at the back. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have seen this on the Hobby King website. If you are a beginner pilot, I wouldn't recommend this. Go and have a look at some of the other models in my flying or fixed wing review series. Uh, if you're intermediate and you're looking for something on karma days or something that's still capable of aerobatics and fun and will require a little bit of skill to fly well, then this is definitely worth a look. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.